Hello and welcome back to my channel and a video called uh, The Power of RAW. I wanted to show you how to work with uh, RAW files in DaVinci Resolve and uh, especially Canon CRM files and show you just the power that lies within these uh, files. So as you can see I have prepared three rather easy clips here on my timeline and we're going to go into uh, the color page and as you can see we're just going to select the, the first clip here now what you have to uh, know about the settings here in davinci resolve is these are canon's raw media light files and to be able to work with those you need to go over to the far left menu here that uh, says camera raw and we need to just change a couple of these settings to, to be able to utilize all the power that lies within these files. So the first thing we can see here is decode quality. So yes, let's just um, see what choices we have and the choices we should make. I want to go to full resolution Canon and we're going to go not to project, but we're going to go down to uh, clip. Now, as you can see now, these controls here that were previously grayed out are now under full uh, manual control uh, by us as filmmakers. And these are the two most important settings you need to change when working within uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, Canon and uh, Clip. So intentionally, I shot all of these uh, clips at 3200 Kelvin. Now that is obviously the wrong choice because we're having mixed light. Uh, it's a 5600 uh, daylight coming through the windows and there's a 3200 light over here. So intentionally, just to show you uh, the power, uh, these were all shot at 3200. Now, the first thing we wanna go to is um, our color space and our gamma. So Canon Cinema Gamma, that is the color space, that is, color space, that is kind of the widest bucket of available uh, colors within um, that raw file. So that's where I'm going to leave my color space at. I want to utilize as much power as I can. And my gamma setting, that is Canon Log 2. You can switch this over to Canon Log 3. And as you can see, we're now getting a more uh, darker image as opposed to Canon Log 2. Canon Log 2 has the most uh, latitude and dynamic range. It's a stop and a half, I think, over um, Canon Log 3 which is kind of the latest, but it doesn't have as much dynamic range as Canon Log 2. So I want to work with the flattest possible image. I'm just going to leave it here on Canon Log 2. And my ISO was set at 800. You can obviously change that to whatever ISO setting uh, you want. Let's just see what happens if we go to, I don't know, 6400. Now look at it. Just see how everything just uh, changed. But that is obviously too much. So we're going to go down and leave it at uh, 800, which is the base ISO of uh, the camera. So let's go over here to our node and I'm going to right click and go down to let and we're going to search for Canon full to full range and we're going to go down to our cinema gamut and Canon log to to be to 709 wide dynamic range and 33 now look what happens when we apply that look. Now instantly you can see we now have color and contrast and everything, but there's still something wrong uh, with that image. It doesn't look very nice. And the next thing I want to do is I want to change my color temperature. Now there are two ways of doing this. We can go to white balance as shot and we can change it to daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten and, and so on. Or we can do it manually. So let's just go and see what happens when we hit daylight. Now, look at that. Look what happened to uh, the image. Now it looks much more natural. We can see the warm light here from my fan and the window. Uh, there's a window here and the light is just spilling in. And now it just brings the whole image uh, to life. And as you can see, our color temperature now changed to 5500. So you can go up and down uh, as much as you want. But we're going to leave it here at um, uh, 5500 uh, like so. Now my exposure I think is pretty okay. Um, saturation and mid-tone detail and contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change 
my metal details we're gonna need one more sharpen so let's just go to uh, let's say 25 and perhaps add a little bit more uh, contrast let's just go to five um, maybe change our sharpness as well to uh, I don't know let's say 15 or something now see what happened uh, to our image we can now turn it off turn it on turn it off and turn it on so this is what lies within the power of raw and I think specifically um, because it, raw is exactly as the name implies it's just a raw signal coming off the sensor there is nothing applied to that signal which is being recorded and we can do all of our adjustments within resolve and basically change the image to uh, to uh, to our liking now but we also have three more clips we want to um, we want to work through if we're pretty happy with this i mean i think i, mean, I think it's okay uh, we're gonna leave it there for now now the next thing you want to do is when you color grade a lot of clips i want to have three but we're doing a color grade clips like this we can go to uh color and we can go to stills and grab still now look what happens when we go to the next shot uh like so we're going back to our uh, node we can go to color again and apply grade now look what happened now we're just applying the same grade as we had on our previous clip like so and you can see that instantly everything here changed it from its default settings of zero and we're now at sharpness at 15 we have a mid-tone detail at 25 and we have a contrast at uh, five so let's just go and do that to um, the same clip uh, as well now this is interesting because we can see on this clip it's gray it's dull and everything here is grayed out as well now i haven't been able to find a setting that enables the like the whole project to read all my crm files like uh, this in a in a default so we have to go back to change to uh, full resolution canon but before we're going to do that let's see what happens when we go to full resolution and resolve and we're going to clip now look what happened everything is happening in the same but now we're not able to change the ISO because Resolve doesn't understand that we are working with uh, CRM files. So we're gonna go and change this to full resolution in Canon. And now that gives us access to all these controls. And as we can see, we're still at the color temperature of uh, 3200 and everything is uh, set to zero here. So we're gonna go doing the same thing. We're gonna go to color, apply grade, wow look at that look what a change um that did and that is um a lot of the power that lies within raw so let's go back to our um editing page and you can see scrolling through it's pretty yeah you know i mean it's quick it is it looks really nice let's see if we can just cut a sequence let's say we're gonna fade in uh the image of uh, i don't know 20 frames or so look what happens yeah, the knife is just come. We think, wow, oh, now what, what is he doing? What, 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 what is he going to do now? And we're going to change our next uh, clip. We're opening. Oh, he's taking out a pan. And finally, we are revealing that we are basically going to make some food. It's, this is just a uh, chicken. But but see how easy that was to go from a gray, dull image like this, and to uh, an image full. Of life and that, that is the power of raw so let's just see if we can make this a little bit more um, cinematic if you uh, want to call it that so we're going to add a, another node at serial like this and let's say what happens if we choose uh, film grain you know to get that uh, more of a gritty feeling now do I think this is more uh, cinematic I'm not sure but we can go here and we can choose our film grain presets. We can choose from uh, all the way from eight millimeter, 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter. And look what happens when we go to only show the grain image, as you can see here. And this is just grain being applied under and we can go and change our grain size. Obviously this is exaggerated, but look what happened now. To the image now is just all murky and you know it's really really great it doesn't fit in 
optimize. I think we can just go back and reset this. But this is how we can apply um, our grain settings pretty easily to our uh, image. And let's just finally, uh, let's just see, we're going to go with the uh, 35 millimeter 400T. We're gonna go up a little bit in uh, grain uh, size. Let's just go like this. Turn off the grain again. Let's play that back. We can see now we have a grain applied to our image. Um, we're just starting over. And let's just see what happens when you go to the timeline, output blanking, and we're going to go with the CinemaScope 239. Look at that. Now we're more into that uh, cinematic realm. You know, I, th I think this is beginning to really, really um, come to life. And I just want to show you another um, plugin that I have. We're just going to add a second node at serial like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going into our look. Now, the first LUT we put on, that was just a lookup table. That is just to get it into the, the color space of Rec. 709 from a log perspective. Now this is more a creative list. I'm going to go with my um, LUT that is called, just need to find it here. It's just called digital to film. Look at that. Now uh, you can see everything was turned more uh, black, but it was a bit too oversaturated. So let's go and dial that saturation. Uh, right back something like there and we can see like before after before and after now obviously this is just your you know your artistic choice if an aesthetic choice if we want to make uh, your look um, of the film look like this let's just play that back and see what happens. It's like, wow, <laughs> now we're really working in a cinematic uh, realm. And this was shot with a Sigma uh, 18 to 35 lens, uh, 1.8, and I think everything was shot here at uh, 35 millimeters. But real quick, you can see how much power we have within uh, RAW to work with, like before and after. So I hope this little tutorial was uh, helpful and if you did find it helpful in any way please uh, consider subscribing to my uh, channel and hit that like button. It really would mean the world to me as I'm still trying to grow my channel and give you more tips like this to uh, to work with your footage because it's taken me a long time to get to this point with everything I showed you here now. Anyway Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.